the word that best describes this project is collaboration. It was intended to be a collaborative process from the very beginning, and we ended up with the most fabulous team to make this important project for the garden come together. My name is Kimberly McHugh, and I'm the Director for Research, Conservation, and Collections at the Desert Botanical Garden, and I'm also the lead for the Hazel Hare Center for Plant Science Project. My name is Matthew Salinger. I am the lead architect on this project, and I'm from Colab Studio. My name is James Trahan. I'm the principal of 180 Degrees Design Build, and my role on the project was um, project manager, overseeing the construction. We wanted to use the integrative design process, and that process is one that kind of breaks the conventional paradigm of how um, projects are, are designed integrative design process brings all of those people together right away along with all of the consultants all of the stakeholders in the project so that everybody is discussing things um, from the general to the specific an architect and a contractor and the client actually all come together shareholders trustees staff everyone that has input into making a project um, become a reality so Greenhouse West really is a state-of-the-art greenhouse that was designed with place in mind. So we're in the desert, which is not the typical kind of place where you see a greenhouse like this. We had to control the solar heat gain on the building, and so we teamed with someone who we knew had the technical expertise to handle that component, and uh, that was Fred at uh, TSM Systems. I'm Fred Woodward with TSM Systems, and we do all kinds of exciting and wild things. The idea was presented by Matt and 180 Degrees on that the, they would like a louver system. We motorize them with uh, Mingardi motors that uh, actuate 17 louvers all at the same time in each bay. Biggest challenge was getting in there and actually doing the installation over the top of the greenhouses, but underneath the louver structure. There's approximately 20,000 components into these. A lot of it was hand machined at our facility, and, uh, and it took a little while, but we got it. One of the key components to the sustainability was really the waterproofing um, and air membrane on the learning center. And so having gone through a project uh, with Valley Homes on liquid applied membranes, uh, we had experience with Donnie Fargo at Fargo Painting uh, to actually install this membrane. Uh, my name is Donnie Fargo. I'm the president of Fargo Painting. We utilized a Prosoco system on the outside of the building, which is a waterproof uh, air barrier system. There's no failure point. It's a 100% consistent wrap of the envelope all the way through the RO. So it's, it's kind of cutting edge and it's a great idea. For the application for the learning lab, it was important to have a color, a product that had a deep color uh, that wouldn't reflect a hue. For example, a really dark bronze, almost a black color. Uh, that was a really important feature because of the polycarbonate paneling. Uh, the option product would have been spray MVP wrap from Prosoco, but the challenge there, it has sort of a, a reddish type of a bubblegum color, and that would have distorted the colors of the paneling. There aren't any joints or seams. It's a continuous envelope, almost as you would think of an epoxy floor. It just keeps flooring as long as you're willing to apply it. So it's kind of fascinating to utilize a product like that. Uh, Matt Salinger came up with this concept of these large boulders stacked on in, and Dustin was integral in really helping us execute that from a size, a shape, um, transportation, the logistics of bringing it from a local Arizona quarry. My name is Dustin Lucchese, um, the owner of Triton Boulder Supply. We provided uh, all the surface select boulders for the Great Wall. Me and the designers and 180 Degrees worked together to kind of come through this boulder wall concept is once we got them loaded onto the trailer and got them down here off the trailer and get into where they're at right now in the wall uh, was another challenge. The boulders, 19 feet, and there's about three foot to four foot of boulder in the ground in themselves to keep from erosion. But the construction of them, they were tilted up on their end and hauled in uh, with a large 100 ton crane and uh, multiple excavators 
to get the boulders to set. So for us in the selection process was, was uh, finding the ones we liked, taking multiple pictures of it, emailing, texting, uh, FaceTiming, you name it, anything we had to convey the information we had on site with the pit to the gardens was the way that we, we went through the selection process. Uh, we brought and trucked in uh, close to 300 tons of the riprap rock and uh, matched the colors and then with the small army we hand placed every single boulder that's inside of these rock walls right now. When you come down here and you actually see what this group of people has done, it's pretty impressive. And the number one touchstone was plants, essentially happy plants, healthy plants, thriving plants. It's the benchmark for us, I think, to look at whether or not it was successful. And wonderfully, you know, the, the garden found that the plants that were in the new greenhouse were thriving in ways that they hadn't seen before in their old facilities. And so um, it, it really makes us feel good that we actually stuck to that. The, the touchstones really meant something, and it really did uh, create a better project.